Hello everyone and welcome back to Sendix Weber channel. Today we're going to be doing a little bit of a different video today uh, and we're going to be looking basically some people have asked me about the stratosphere um, sudden stratospheric warmings and basically you know how to explain it so I'll try and explain it the best I can in this video. So um, yeah I've had a few requests for it, it's something a bit different and I thought we'd clear things up on um, the basics of it really, I'll just go through it at a basic level. Um, there will be a regular video later on, depending on when you're watching this. Um, but yeah, I'm going to have a rundown, have a look through the latest models, and I'll try and explain it the best I can. So, um, the stratosphere is 31 kilometres above, basically, us. Um, I'd got that a little bit wrong in a previous video, but yeah, it's 50 miles or 31 kilometres above us. Um, it's basically um, air above the atmosphere um, at which can have impacts on our weather. Now a sudden stratospheric warming or a warming is usually takes place over Siberia which is where I'm drawing right now on the graph is over Siberia um, and Norway but obviously in the stratosphere a level above the atmosphere um, at 10 HPA 31 kilometers above the, um, the atmosphere and um, as you can see basically what we're looking for is warming so when we see this 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 big blue blob here is the polar vortex at its roots now you might have heard in previous years people talk about the PV of doom basically what that is is when this thing here called the polar vortex this big blue blob is strong so at the moment you can see at its core the temperatures are around minus 80 to minus 84 degrees which obviously is pretty pretty um pretty strong um However, it is a little bit below average for the time of year. Basically, what you'd expect is the peak um, temperatures at the um, stratospheric level of the polar vortex to be around minus 84 at the peak, which is usually through December into the start of January is when it's at its strongest. And then it weakens as you move into the spring, um, late winter into early spring. Now, basically, look, see, we, we see this warming over Siberia gathering pace. Basically, what you want is if you're after a sudden stratospheric warming, you want this big warm sector here, so what we call oranges and reds, <laughs> to be strong here. These are the, your warmer temperatures in the stratosphere, and you want them to basically push uh, a, bit that, a bit high enough so that they push towards the polar vortex and put pressure on it. And what you want then is for it to be displaced over northern Europe in the stratosphere. So we want it to be moved from its position over the North Pole southwards. Or, in some cases where you get a proper sudden stratospheric warming, where the chart splits. So you get two lobes of blue splitting off. One goes into Canada, the other goes into Eastern Europe. It's sort of the idea that you're after. As you can see from this latest GFS run, there is some warming there. You're now evident um, over Siberia. And you can see it does gather pace, but the polar vortex at its roots is stronger. And it doesn't really weaken. And as you can see, um, if we carry on with this run, up to the 21st, of um, November 22nd beyond you can see polar vortex is not really strengthening as, as you'd expect for the time of year it's kind of just stabilizing and staying around minus 76 to minus 80 degrees at its core but you can see that warming eventually begins to dissipate into the final frames of the run now what you'd really want to see for a sun stratospheric warming is big oranges and reds over Siberia which begin to weaken the polar vortex at its core one thing I will say is that a November slash early December sun stratospheric warming is quite a rare event. But this year it could happen and I'll show you why. If we move over to the ECM WF and have a look at the zonal mean winds, um, then you can see that this zero degree line is the threshold for a sudden stratospheric warming is the level there zero meters per second or below that's considered a reversal so look at the latest ecm runs now in this there's all of the ecm ensembles which is 52 of them and if you look at the average line it is dropping this blue line which is hard to see is the average of all of the runs so you can see here that it's dropping to around five to six meters per second so not quite a sun stratospheric warming level now you can see if we went zero or below these are the levels, whether these are runs which are showing a sudden stratospheric warming up in the stratosphere. And obviously it takes about two weeks so that you see an impact on the UK's weather or on the global weather patterns later down the line. So if we had one around the 25th of November, we'd expect to see impacts into the second week of December and beyond. But it doesn't always work like that. There's obviously plenty of other factors, but it can help increase colder weather potential. 
So that's what we want is to see more of these runs gathering towards this zero degree line. You can see there are quite a few which are showing it. I'd say about 20, but there's definitely at least 30 or more going for not going for a reversal of zonal wind. This has been chopping and changing a lot. And I'd say the likelihood has definitely increased. I'd say there's a medium chance of a sudden stratospheric warming occurring between the 21st of 24th of um, November and the 1st of December this year. You can see there's quite a few runs suggesting it might happen, so we'll have to see how it plays out. Uh, but yeah, it definitely can have an impact later down the line. It can increase your blocking patterns, which we'd like to talk about up to the northwest of the UK, like we're seeing develop over the next few weeks with this cold spell arriving. Um, which may bring some winteriness, but more on that um, in the next video. And um, it could increase chances of cold blocking potential, snowy potential, into the start of December. So yeah, just thought I'd make this quick video just to explain it really. Hopefully it was informative, I'm still learning about it myself. Uh, but yeah, some people have definitely messaged me a lot about it and I thought I'd go through it the best I could. So thank you all very much for watching this quick video. If you did find it informative, consider leaving a like and subscribing to the channel. And I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye, everyone.